the food service is open. The general manager from Extreme PETA desperately wants to open. Um, thanks for the question, Dylan. I'll ask Dave Button uh, to, uh, to speak to that. Thanks, Raj, Dylan, and uh, good to see you on the uh, on the video as well. I know that you've been uh, busy busy through the summer uh, helping us out as well. So thanks for that. The uh, food service. Uh, there are many different food service providers, and of course, those with the business, like uh, well, even the owl, uh, financially as a business would be challenged, and of course, all of the other uh, private folks on campus, like Peter Pitt. Uh, this is their, their livelihood, so they definitely want to get back to it. We're reviewing that right now. I believe that there might be a submission coming from uh, uh, the, the PETA pit to open. One of the challenges, of course, will be a, a business case to actually open. With so few students, as I mentioned, uh, in total, in any one day, there's only 150 students. So is it a viable uh, financial operation to open, even if... Uh, it were permitted and it were safe. Uh, and so that'll be a question that the individual business people will have to decide. We will not be opening chart wells, any chart wells uh, operations uh, for this entire uh, calendar year. So none of the chart wells ones will be open. Luther is open right now and Luther is the one that is providing uh, food service to our uh, resident students who don't have cooking facilities or need to take and get access there. Uh, and Luther has indicated that they will expand their operation uh, if need be to a, a, a drop-in service for those that are required. But some of the other areas are at this point they're closed and uh, there may be an application for Extreme PDO to open and I know that we'll be meeting about the OWL uh, and things early next week. Hopefully that helps answer your question, Dylan. Thank you. Um, we have a question from uh, Imakan. Sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. You asked you asked two qu uh, questions, so I'll an ask this la the second question where you included the first. So, where can we find what labs and other classes will actually be available on campus, and will the and I think this answer question was answered, but will the gym and the basketball courts be open for recreational use? The gym and the basketball courts, they will not be open. The facilities are closed. And I'll ask David Gregory to comment on the list of on-campus offerings. Yes, the, the list of on-campus, uh, and they're, they're, they're not courses, they're course components. So they're labs and studios. So they're parts of courses and they're hands-on. They're, they're courses that are very difficult to deliver remotely. So any student who has to be on campus to take labs or to, take, uh, to engage in studios, uh, experiences out of the Faculty of MAP have already been contacted. If you have not been contacted, you are not coming on campus for your classes, okay? So we've already reached out to the students. The listing is on the uh, University of Regina website uh, under the information for fall term. And uh, there's a listing there of every single, there's seven, uh, seven faculties that are, excuse me, six faculties that are offering these uh, course components and they're all listed, including the, the, the labs and the studios. So you'll get that information on the main website, but just to emphasize that, that any student who must be on campus to take those course components will have already been contacted. So if you haven't heard from your faculty or your department, you're not obligated to come onto campus. Well, thank you. Uh, we have a question from Mullen. Uh, they ask, are, I think, uh, faculty, so will um, our faculty members, of, uh, will they be available on campus? Uh, that's an individual decision of each faculty member. We are not requiring faculty members to be on campus. Uh, there may be some who choose to do that, uh, do so in a, an appropriately physically distanced manner. I would guess that the majority of the faculty members will not be on campus as they do their part to try to keep the risk low, but that's really a question for individual faculty members. Thank you. We have another, we have a question from Marion. I have a master, a, gra a graduate class in the fall that runs all day on Saturdays. Will students in such classes be expected to be online? sitting in front of a computer for full eight hours at a time or how will these types of courses be managed? 
Great, uh, great question, Mary, and I'll start that and again, turn it over to the provost. Um, we each fall have, um, just so you know, a major retreat for our leadership team, and typically that runs a full day and a half. <laughs> and when we began planning that earlier this summer, we thought, no, we cannot spend a day and a half on Zoom. It's just uh, too hard on people. So what we've done is segmented that over several days and reduced the amount of time in front of the camera. I would suggest that, um, uh, Marion, is it? Yes, Marion, that you speak to your instructor. I know whoever the instructor is will be aware of the strain that eight hours in front of a screen would pose on students, and the instructor may well be uh, willing to consider uh, flexible options for delivery. I, ca I can't make that promise, but I would recommend reaching out to the, uh, the instructor. Uh, David, anything that you would add? Uh, not too much to add to that, uh, Tom, uh, except to say, uh, uh, Marion, if, uh, if, uh, if you talk to your professor and uh, you, you still feel that that's a challenging situation, just send me an email, uh, provost at uregina.ca. That's provost at uregina.ca, and I'll, I can follow up with the faculty member to understand better what's happening. So thank you. Uh, we have, uh, I just saw there's, that there's two questions or comments about the e-proctoring software, so I'll, I will outline them. Pranav asks, university is going to use e-proctoring software. Can anybody explain in detail about that software? And what about the students who don't have web cameras on their computers? And then Alfred says, the plan to use an e-proctoring software has been met with some serious concern. However, I can understand the angle the university is coming from. That said though, the concerns cannot be ignored either. Um, will, st will students have the option beforehand to see whether their prof or will be utilizing the proctoring software or not? Yeah, great, uh, great question, Alfred and others. Our series of questions, I'm going to ask David to comment on uh, the question that Alfred asks. Will students be able to see whether their prof ahead of time uh, we'll be using this software and then turn it over to Art, who's our expert uh, in information services, to say something about uh, some of the technical aspects of e-proctoring, including camera. So, David, if you would. Yes, thank you, Tom. Alfred, great question. The answer to your question is yes. Uh, students will be advised in advance uh, as to whether there will be e-proctoring happening in their course. And there are so, uh, likely several locations where that information will be housed. Uh, when you go, when you, uh, it'll certainly be in your syllabus uh, for that course, uh, but we're also encouraging faculty to place that information uh, when you go to register for your courses and, you, and there's some basic information about that course, that information will be there. So all students should be aware before they uh, register for a class and or once they're in the class, whether there's electronic proctoring. Uh, that has to be known in advance and we'll, uh, I know my um, teaching uh, colleagues will make sure that that is indeed the case. And Art, if you could um, take us through some of the wonderful um, technical aspects of e-proctoring. Thank you, uh, Dr. Chase. I'll, I'll uh, take a shot at that. Uh, in very broad terms, the e-proctoring platform uh, attempts to control what the student is able to do on a computer such that an instructor can lay out certain conditions for uh, allowed behaviors um, and software and additional aids which may be employed in the uh, writing of an exam. And the software also then uh, records through the uh, webcam the student taking the exam as well as records uh, images of the computer screen of the student while the exam is, is being taken. This all uh, intended to give the instructor similar capabilities um, to that which would be present were a student uh, to be writing in person uh, in one of the gymnasiums uh, at the university. Now, the, the software itself is fairly complex. There are a lot of options which can be configured um, in accordance with an instructor's wishes to create a particular environment to, in which to assess uh, learning on the part of a student. So it's a little bit difficult to make really broad uh, statements about uh, what a student might or might not uh, be able to um, uh, be permitted to do uh, when writing a particular exam. So individual circumstances will vary a little bit um, in terms of the experience of, of the student. 
As for students which don't have webcams, we're trying very, very hard to make clear to students uh, as they register for courses and as they enter the fall semester that uh, the, the uh, uh, whole environment around uh, teaching and learning at a distance requires this sort of technology. And we expect most students will uh, attend classes and register uh, for classes with this technology present. But for those few that may not, we have uh, uh, a couple of options and uh, one or two things that we continue to work on. Uh, for starters, we have an equipment lending program uh, by which um, uh, we're prepared to lend equipment to students for the duration of a semester to ensure that students can complete their, their uh, studies uh, in a given semester. We also has, have, as um, Dr. Gregory pointed out earlier, uh, the university library reopening for the fall semester. And we are busy trying to make arrangements for the computers in that facility to be equipped such that students can participate both in online classes as well as proctored exams if, uh, if the need arises. And as for uh, things that we're working on, uh, there, there are some tools which would allow a student uh, to take an exam using a cell phone or mobile device as a substitute for a web camera. Uh, we haven't engaged the, uh, the academic community about that possibility, uh, nor have we tested it technically, but that's uh, something that, that uh, we're pursuing and maybe a, a further option for students of need. Well, thank you. Um, could, I, could I just add something there too? And I sure. really want to stress this. Um, what we're doing in e-proctoring is providing a choice to instructors. It's very much the individual professors or instructors choice of what method to use e-proctoring, other avenues of um, evaluation and so on. That's very much part of an instructor's academic freedom. What I do want to say is that I invite all of you, uh, everybody on this call, every student on this call to work with us to guard the academic integrity of evaluation of student work because the value of your degrees depends on academic integrity. And this is why we're making this option available to instructors. And I know we can count on Earth's leadership and people on this call to work with us to guard that integrity and therefore guard the, guard the value of the University of Regina degree that you're working so hard to earn. So 